Welcome everyone. Today we have uh, Jeffrey Everts. He was awarded PhD in 2016 in the Institute for Theoretical Physics, but in Utrecht University in Netherlands. Uh, then he won the Marius Kłodowska Curie Fellowship and moved with that to Slovenia. Since 2020, he works in the Institute of uh, Physical Chemistry of the Polish Academy of Science. This is one of these institutes with which we have a Warsaw for PhD school. He's benefiting from the ULAM program. He's studying soft matter, liquid crystal, and topology. We had a few very nice talks from the soft matter community. Probably you remember uh, Maciej Lisicki. Uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, this talk today. Unfortunately, this is still an online talk, but I hope that uh, starting from the next week, we have hybrid or just on-site uh, colloquium. So this is probably the one, the last online uh, colloquium in this semester. If you be, if you like to discuss with Jeffrey, maybe we can arrange such meetings just next week uh, in CFT. But now we have this online talk. So Jeffrey, the screen is yours. Okay. So today I would like to talk about a project that uh, I've been involved with when I was living in Slovenia. So it was uh, about uh, charging topological defects and surfaces with pneumatic electric double layers. So uh, there's a lot of maybe uh, unknown words in this title, which I hope will be clear in the, at the end of the talk. So for example, in the pneumatic, it, uh, it relates to uh, uh, the pneumatic liquid crystals. So liquid crystals, they are uh, materials that are kind of uh, between solids and normal liquids. So if you would, for example, put a liquid crystal under a microscope, you can see an image like this. So it has some, uh, so this is under crossed polarizers and this yields so-called Schlieren texture. So you have these uh, swirly patterns emerging everywhere, which uh, is because the molecules they, uh, of this substance, they orient themselves in a, in a preferred direction. Um, and that's why it's called a liquid crystal, because you have a partial ordering of a liquid. Also in this image, you see like uh, various points, which are topological defects. So, uh, so although the you have a preferred direction of the molecules. It can always occur that, for example, at a single point, the ordering, you have a mismatch of the orientational ordering, and this uh, will give rise to such topological defects. And you can have, uh, you can quantify them by, for example, topological invariance, but and many studies have been done about uh, their topology. But in this talk, I would, I would like to argue that actually, uh, some interesting things can happen uh, when you also add ions to such a liquid crystal. For example, you can even make uh, a topological defect electrically charged by doing so. So uh, first, a few words about these so-called electric double layers. So they are roughly uh, what is meant by an electric double layer is that you have literally two layers of charge. Uh, often, for example, you have a surface charge that's on, for example, an electrode, in this case, uh, in this example, or on activated carbon in the upper left corner, and a diffuse cloud of uh, neutral charges uh, surrounding this surface charge. Uh, and, and the combined uh, two of them, they are called electric double layers. They have like profound um, um, importance in, for example, applications in terms of energy storage. So think about electrochemical cells, supercapacitors, but also they occur in plasma physics. So when you uh, ionize, for example, uh, a gas, but also in biophysics, uh, biophysics they are really relevant because uh, a lot of uh, constituents in, for example, the living cell are charged objects and they are often in water, and in water you have ions, so you have also double layers in uh, biological systems, but also colloidal suspensions, so uh, particles that are moving in a Brownian way. Uh, they have uh, shown some interest where electric double layers played an important role. Um, and I, in this talk, I would like to argue that if you add a liquid, uh, these ions to a liquid crystal, you have actually uh, this is actually a multidisciplinary unexplored field 
which involves statistical mechanics, but also electrostatics, colloidal physics, topology, and you can even play with hydrodynamics or poly poly polymer physics. Um, so in this talk, I would like to focus on a few uh, things. So you can take a, learn a few things in this talk, I hope. So one of them is that uh, I will tell you some basics about liquid crystals. Why are they called liquid crystals? What are their properties? Uh, electric double layers. And then I will move on to some of my own work. So amongst others, the ionic charging of topological defects. And I show also that you can control surface charges with topological defects. Um, and uh, before I start, I would also like to uh, uh, acknowledge my collaborators. So Mika Ravnik was my uh, postdoc advisor in Ljubljana and uh, Simon Chopa, although I never published with him, uh, he, he learned me, he taught me a lot about uh, liquid crystals and topology in general. So he was like my kind of sparring partner at the days. So first of all, what are liquid crystals? So uh, if you look at, uh, for example, a substance such as uh, molecules, uh, so for example, this, uh, this kind of molecule, which has an elongated shape. Uh, so liquid crystals, they occur uh, not for spherical particles. Um, if you would, you can order them, if they are totally disordered, so you have no preferred orientation or neither the center of mass positions are uh, ordered in the lattice, then this is called the isotropic phase. So this is like all the, like ordinary liquids, such as water, alcohol, or you name it. Uh, when, however, the, the, the these molecules or uh, what like uh, substances, they order themselves in a preferred direction, but they have disordered center of masses. They are called pneumatic phases. But when the center of masses order themselves along one di dimension, you have a smectic phase, which is depicted here. Um, you can also have that the center of mass positions order themselves in a lattice, but, they're, they're, but there's no preferred orientation, and you have a plastic crystal. And when you have both orientational and positional ordering, you have a, uh, a crystal. So you can kind of see that you have a, a liquid crystals, they have kind of ordering due to the or preferred orientational structure, but they are still a bit disordered like a normal, normal liquid. And these uh, systems, they occur as molecules, for example, this 5CB molecule, which become liquid crystalline when you lower the temperature. Uh, but also, for example, viruses, so it's the tobacco mosaic virus, which is a, a particle that is quite larger than a molecule, can order themselves in liquid crystalline fashions. Um, so why the name uh, liquid crystal? So the name comes because sometimes it behaves like a solid. So liquid crystals, they, you can, for example, deform them and there's an elastic energy associated with it. So for example, you have a, a few, uh, based on symmetry arguments, you can argue that you have some basic deformation modes, modes which are splay, twist and bend, for example, for pneumatic liquid crystal, and you have an elastic free energy associated with such deformations from a uniform state. But sometimes they behave also like a liquid. For example, uh, if there is, uh, you can imagine a system where you have two plates and the liquid crystal is ordered along a preferred direction between these plates and you apply, apply a flow uh, perpendicular to their orientation, then you, the, you can indeed have a disruption of this orientational structure and, uh, and this can lead, for example, to many different patterns shown in these various images. Um, so liquid crystals, uh, you can uh, think about how to quantify them. So the way to quantify them is by an Euler parameter. So uh, liquid crystals are different than, for example, polar phases, such as magnets. Uh, because in addition to a preferred orientation, they have also that for every uh, molecular building block, the up and down are the same. So the symmetry group is uh, not uh, SO3, but O3 over Z2, basically. 
So that's why it's a tensor and not a, a vector that quantifies liquid crystals. And in this eigenframe, you can uh, quant uh, you can write it here. So you have a preferred orientation, which is the director, which you can have also, for example, ordering in uh, along two axes, so in a plane, which is called uh, biaxial pneumatic, which is quantified by this p degree of ordering, while the uh, S quantifies how much ordering you have along this uh, director M. Um, and so, as I also said in the introduction, like what's uh, very interesting about uh, liquid crystals is that they can also exhibit so-called uh, patterns that are topologically protected, so topological defects. So a few of these uh, defects I've shown here, which you can quantify by a winding number S. So you have, for example, uh, S one half uh, looks like this. So you have uh, here a defect uh, shown in as by the uh, black dot. And uh, depending on the charge, you can have different topological defects. And of course, uh, like this normal with topological defects, you have a conservation of topological charge. So you can only annihilate, uh, get rid of a defect by annihil annihilating two uh, topological defects such that the uh, topological charges are conserved. Uh, excuse me, maybe it's a stupid question, but I didn't get what is the meaning of this S actually, why this is, uh, what is the relation? Uh... Oh, in, in this case, it's for example, the winding number. So you can define a winding number by a, a contour integral of the director field of a closed path around the defect core. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't mm -hmm. it be then a, an integer number? Or this is just a convention that's divided by two. Because so I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So in uh, liquid crystals, you can uh, obtain half integer uh, winding numbers because of their up down symmetry. So, uh, for example, the half integer topological defects cannot occur, for example, in magnets. So that makes the uh, topological defects of liquid crystals different than, for example, magnetic systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can uh, you can derive it by based on the symmetry group of the liquid crystal, which is uh, O3 over so these are really two dimensional structures. Um, in this case, I would say they are line defects, but you can have also like two dimensional topological defects. So you have to think about that this point is coming out of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so topological defects it can uh, also occur around uh, when you uh, add a, a particle, for example, in a liquid crystal. They can you can have more uh, different topological defects. For example, you impose some condition on the particle such that you have a specific direction of the director on the particle surface, but in the far field it has to be, for example, pointing in the z direction. And then you can have defects such as the Saturn ring defect. And uh, when you look at them in uh, multi-particle systems, you can uh, actually, the Saturn rings do interesting things. So they can merge and they can form like these uh, knot-like structures around uh, the colloidal particles, actually really knitting them together. And uh, it was shown, for example, that these, uh, these knots have very interesting uh, structures. For example, these uh, knots around uh, such a colloidal structure is has shown to be uh, to be topologically uh, equivalent to a trefoil knot, which has some mathematical uh, uh, properties. And I, I would also like to argue that topological defects are even tunable. So when you put, for example, a topological defect under the microscope uh, on the cross polarizers, they can uh, so the specific direction of the molecules can give rise to various bright spots or dark spots, depending on the local orientation. And here, for example, you see that uh, by applying a voltage, uh, you can induce some orientational change in the liquid crystal, which uh, causes the, uh, a defect to a defect to move uh, upwards. Um, and when you switch off, the, it, uh, it changes again, uh, and then, uh, it, uh, the defect moves again the other way. And uh, this has, for example, been quantified. For example, for this case, you have uh, here, uh, you can uh, polymerize, for example, um, left and right of such a substance 
such that the director structure is fixed. This causes to, uh, the existence of a particular topological defect. And if you then switch on, for example, voltage, you can move the defect around to the other side, whereas switching it off means that the defect moves to the other side. So you can even manipulate in a certain sense where topological defects occur, which is kind of uh, cool, I think. And finally, I would like to say that uh, you have various applications of liquid crystals, such as uh, I think most of you know the LCD uh, screens, but also smart windows. Imagine uh, droplets of liquid crystalline material and they're with uh, random orientations. Uh, and when you shine light through it, uh, it scatters in all possible directions. So the so you cannot see through the through the window anymore. So it's opaque. Whereas if you uh, switch on the voltage, all the liquid crystalline uh, droplets yeah, align themselves along the electric field, and then it becomes transparent. Uh, these so in this Dreamliner uh, planes. Yeah, yeah. Boeing is using such a trick. Yeah, so it's a nice application of uh, liquid crystals. Um, so why ions? So uh, typically uh, ions, they are not well studied when in the liquid crystal community, such as not like, for example, in water ions have been uh, well studied. The reason for that is that actually ions they obscure the performance of uh, devices such as LCD screens, you have, for example, bad pixels and stuff. So, however, ions here are always present in liquid crystals. So they are like always at typical concentrations of 10 to 20 uh, cube meter over cube meter. Um, so you can never really get rid of them. So it's like important to check their influence. Uh, and actually in, in this talk, we want them. So we want to have, we don't want to get rid of the ions. And also, I would like to argue if you look at biological systems such as this, these viruses or uh, DNA, uh, which are always charged, and in watery systems, uh, there are always ions uh, involved. And of course, also in terms of applications such as uh, capacitors or supercapacitors, even. So, uh, to get uh, everyone on the same footing, I will first discuss how ions uh, react in uh, simple liquids. Um, so in simple liquids, the canonical example of electric double A is that of a, uh, of a charge plate, which is uh, uh, denoted here in red, which has a surface charge sigma. And this uh, surface charge, it can uh, come about because ions, for example, absorb on the particle surface. So it, uh, it's, they stick to the surface, and then you have a layer of, of charges on the surface. Um, However, some ions they retain in the liquid and they move around there. Uh, so you, one can describe such a system in mean field theory by, for example, starting out with the Poisson equation, which is shown here. And, uh, and uh, you can assume that uh, the ions are, uh, for example, Boltzmann distributed. And if you combine these two equations, you get the so-called Poisson-Boltzmann equation. Uh, together with some boundary conditions, of course, electrostatic boundary conditions. And what this equation tells you is that uh, the electrostatic potential that uh, from the plate towards the, uh, from the plate, uh, decays uh, with a characteristic decay length kappa minus one, which is the, the Bayes screening length. And, it, uh, and if you look at the ion density profiles, you see also that they decay. So uh, with this same length scale kappa minus one. So what, what you can see from this example is that uh, a charge plate in a uh, typical uh, solution of ions will always uh, generate an electric double layer. So you have a fixed surface charge sigma mm -hmm. and a diffuse ion cloud. Yes. What is lambda B? Uh, lambda B is, uh, yeah, so it's conventional and soft matter to uh, scale everything with uh, KBT. So this uh, phi here is actually scaled by KBT. So mm -hmm. lambda B, uh, and then the lambda B is an emerging length scale that says how strong the electric that uh, the distance over which the electrostatic interaction between two point charges is equal to one KBT. So it's like this is bare room length. Yes, this is the BM length. Mm. Okay. 
So, um, uh, so you can see what the electric double layers does. So if you have a fixed surface charge, um, you have on the one hand, ions want to uh, come closer to the surface because you have uh, because of electrostatics. So for example, minus ions want to go, go closer to the plus ions, uh, but they don't stick to the, the external surface because you have also entropy. So entropy wants to uh, prevent, wants to have the ions uh, as homogeneous as possible and the competition of these effects leads to this diffuse ion cloud. So, um, how does this uh, electric double layers come about in uh, topological defects? So this is uh, so you can, for example, think about uh, a defect line, which is shown in green. Uh, so because of the singular structure in the center of the defect, uh, you have a, a core where, where the liquid crystalline material is locally molten, and one can ask uh, themselves, like, what happens? if you uh, check such a defect line in ionic solution and see how the ions redistribute uh, along the defect. So there are various types of uh, couplings that uh, emerge in liquid crystals. For example, uh, one of them, one of the properties of liquid crystals is that they have anisotropic dielectrics. So the you have uh, that instead of a dielectric constant, like in simple liquids, you have a dielectric tensor. So it depends actually, uh, the strength of the dielectric constant is kind of uh, dependent on the orientation, local orientation of the molecules. Um, one of them, this gives rise to a dielectric coupling. For example, if you look in the free energy, it will give rise to delta epsilon n dot e. So if delta epsilon is, for example, positive, uh, the you can lower the free energy by aligning the director field uh, with the electric field whereas if it's negative it uh, you it wants to be perpendicular to the electric field uh, another property of liquid crystals is that um, often the constituents they are they have they carry dipoles uh, but it depends on the shape of the specific molecule so if you bend uh, globally the, for example, the liquid crystal, you can uh, 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 induce a polarization just because of strain. So this is called flexoelectricity. So in this case, you have a, a macroscopic polarization because you bend, you do a bend formation. Uh, and in this case, uh, you have also uh, because of a splay deformation. Uh, so you can quantify this uh, polarization fields uh, by the deformation of the director field. And, uh, but you have also that uh, the polarization due to the ordering, so that uh, gradients of, for example, this degree of ordering, the scalar order parameter S, can also lead to a local polarization. And this leads to uh, the familiar uh, contribution to the free energy minus p dot e. And what is also true is in liquid crystals. Uh, so I've sh shown before that a defect line is uh, usually uh, described by a molten core uh, where the, so around the defect core, the liquid crystal is uh, typically like a late normal liquid. So you can also imagine that ions dissolve better in a normal liquid and, for example, pneumatic phase, because usually it's easier to dissolve uh, substances in disordered phases than in ordered phases. So um, when you include these effects, uh, one can, for example, the simplest possible system that one can look can at. Can I possibly ask the question? I mean, are no. you implying that there is no difference between the interaction of the positive and charged ions with the pneumatic crystals, which is free of topological defect? I mean, if I just have a pneumatic crystal which does not have any defects in it and put up there the positive and negative ions, there is a difference or not? I would say it's uh, homogeneous. You need uh, like. Uh... What, what do you mean by homogeneous? The liquid is, if it's disordered pneumatic, then it's homogeneous for the, I mean, 
Yeah, I put the, the negative charge and the positive charge. Does it interact with the with the molecule of the liquid, which out of which the pneumatic crystals are built in the same way? Uh, I mean, sure, that there are interactions between the ions and the constituents of the liquid crystal. But when you take an assembly average, the local density is. Uh, uh, constant. You need like an external potential or a charged external surface. It's puzzling because if I take the simple example, a helium, a liquid yeah. helium, and I put up the positive and negative charge in it, then the difference is completely different, the interaction. And that is why the, the pre, pre topological defects, the vortex lines in the liquid helium, they interact completely different with the positive and negative ions. That was actually how the Feynman explained the origin of a Feynman Olsager vortices. So, I mean, it's puzzling to me that if I have a generic pneumatic crystal, then it's completely independent whether I put there a negative or positive ion. The electrostriction of a liquid crystal does not depend on whether the, the charge is positive or negative. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't understand this example of liquid helium, to be honest, because, yeah, because when you have the vortex line, so it's you have a charge, and you have a molecule. Then okay, the molecules occasionally behaves differently when the external charge is positive or negative. That is the electrostriction of the molecule, and yeah, that sure. happens. That happens in the helium. The positive ion in a helium is a center of a pressure and the negative is a, is a expanding. And that's why the negative ions are coupled to the vortices, to the topological defects, and the positive ions are deflected from it. I mean, that was just the, I, I, I don't know how it is in liquid crystal, I'm just asking. Um. I mean, surely, like uh, an interaction. If you look like at one liquid crystal molecule with a positive or negative ion, the interactions can differ. Uh, but um, I think in in the, because it's a classical system, the you really need like an external uh, potential or. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, for example, an external charged surface <laughs> to induce a. A microscopic uh, inhomogeneous uh, charge density. I don't know if uh, it's, uh, or maybe I don't. I, 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 don't maybe. I, I mean, I'm, I was just asking because I happen to know that if you have the something which in, in some mathematical sense behaves very similar to the pneumatic liquid crystal, this is the phase A of a helium three. Uh, then uh, the, there is a difference, mm -hmm. but I mean, my, my, maybe there is different in pneumatic crystals. I, I, I was just curious, uh, but I mean, well, well we will see. That, know uh, much, well, I mean, surely you know much better than uh, I mean. I so may, may some comment. There is no difference. There is nothing special if you put negative or positive ions. Well, then that's absolutely fine. nothing. Uh -huh. But there are such experiments, or there I'm, are, yes. You can discriminate it, this uh, ions by special means, but as far as the fundamental interaction are concerned, there is no difference. It's just plus or minus. Well, uh, like in this case, you will see that. Uh, I mean, I will come to it. Uh, like, for example, one can imagine, like in this case, that, uh, for example, negative ions, they dissolve better in the isotropic phase than, for example, uh, the, the, the other type of ion. And, and in this case, you have kind of an asymmetry that also leads to electric double layers. But I will come to that. But it's like a different type of, so these are also kind of because uh, positive or negative ions interact with uh, liquid crystal molecules in a different way. So they, but it's like a non of non electrostatic nature, I would say. It's chemical nature. And if you take another an, another liquid crystal substance, the situation can be uh, reversed. Exactly. Okay. 
So uh, one can, for example, look at uh, electrostatic potential. Um, so the, oh, wait, maybe I didn't say it yet. So if you add ions to the system uh, and you look at various effects, so for example, you turn on only older electricity, or you look at this ion partitioning, so this preferred solvation, or both effects together, you see that the structure of a pneumatic isotropic interface does not change. So you have uh, for Z smaller than zero, where you have an isotropic phase, and for Z larger than zero, pneumatic phase. However, when you look at the electrostatic potential, you see some interesting stuff. Uh, so one of them is uh, if you turn on older electros uh, electricity, you see that it causes a modulation of the electric uh, potential close to the uh, pneumatic isotropic interface. Um, uh, moreover, if you turn on this ion partitioning so that ions either uh, they prefer to dissolve in the isotropic phase, but uh, for example, cut ions, uh, they want to dissolve better or anions, they want to dissolve better. It, this will lead to a potential jump uh, across the interface. And if you combine the two effects, you have like a superposition of the two effects. Um, in, in terms of ion densities, uh, this modulation of the electrostatic potential leads actually to uh, also electric double layers uh, around the interface. So one of them is, for example, if you have older electricity, you see in the, uh, the dashed lines are, for example, positive ions, the full lines are uh, negative ions. And you see that uh, one can actually get uh, electric double layers uh, purely by older electricity. Uh, or, or ion partitioning. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an effect where not an uh, external charged surface is needed. Um, and in this case, it's, it has kind of uh, similarities to uh, PN junctions. So PN junctions are like uh, semiconducting materials. For example, you have more negative uh, charged carriers in one material and more positive charged carriers in the other one. So, uh, so there are two opposing effects. So one of them is that you have a, diffuse, a diffusion process. So ions diffuse uh, towards a region where there is a low concentration of them. But this in turn generates an electric field that works again opposite to the diffusion. Uh, and if you, do, if you let it equilibrate, it will lead to a so-called uh, depletion layer um, along the interface. Uh, where there is a potential jump and hence an electric field along the uh, along the junction, and and actually this uh, these electric double layers along the metric isotropic interfaces, uh, you can draw kind of the analogy with this, and they also occur in oil water systems, so they're not really uh, assist, uh, uh, only existing in liquid crystalline materials, but also in simple liquids. Because you can imagine that if you have uh, an oil uh, and water, uh, ions dissolve in general uh, bad in oil, but good in water. So you can also have the same ion partitioning effect that uh, I discussed earlier, although you cannot have the, the older electric effect. So uh, th these are like the most simple systems, like one dimensional systems. And then we, we, we were asking the question, like what happens uh, when we look at this clination line. So for example, this is, uh, we looked at the half integer uh, this clination lines. So this is uh, minus one half and plus one half. Um, and in green, I've uh, indicated the region where the, where the liquid crystal is molten. And because of the structure of the liquid crystal, uh, you, you have, a, and you turn on only ion partitioning then ions, they generally want to accumulate in the central region. Uh, and this occurs for both type of defects. And you have a diffuse uh, ion cloud around it, which is shown in uh, like pale uh, red. Uh, but it's uh, kind of fo follows the shape of the defect. However, when you uh, do uh, flexoelectricity, uh, the defect uh, charges in a completely uh, more interesting way. So you have here a lobe of um, positive charge with, with a, a few lobes of negative charge. 
So it, it's actually not even an electric double layer anymore, but an electric multi-layer. Uh, and the same is with the, the plus one half defect, although uh, here the charges are just separated uh, by a single interface. And when you uh, combine the two effects together, you have uh, charge patterns like this. So this shows that actually topological defects can induce some uh, charge patterns. How, and finally, we have looked at more uh, complicated uh, defects. So for example, that of a colloidal particle, where, which has preferred orientation on its surface and where there's the far field points in one direction. Um, and then you can have either a setting defect or a point defect below the particle and which can be tuned by particle size or external field. So one can have, for example, a charged satin ring when you have uh, only ion partitioning. And you can have uh, more complicated charge structures around the satin ring when you also include the flexoelectric effect. And this can give rise to, uh, yes? Was there a question or? I think it was some accidental voice. Ah, okay. Um, so one has the uh, a complicated diffuse uh, ion cloud around a colloidal particle with uh, various slopes of positive and negative charge. And this is completely different, for example, as in normal liquids where you would just have a spherical double layer. And you can also combine the two effects. And uh, for a, for a point defect below the particle, yeah, it you have uh, you can also charge the point defect, or you can uh, when flexoelectricity is included, you can have again like a complicated charge pattern as such as shown here, which can give rise to a very interesting looking structure of the double layer around the charge particle. And uh, again, you can combine the two effects. And I must say that also that uh, these double layers they can even exist when the particles are uncharged. So then um, I would like to talk about uh, my sec the second part of the talk, which is uh, surface char charge control with topological defects. So I, I said before that uh, if you look at uh, simple liquids, uh, you have an electric double layer. But if you look at the surface charge in the XY plane, you, it's actually a constant because there is no preferred orientation. The system is translational invariant in this plane. However, uh, we would like to argue that uh, when you have, for example, a pattern surface, such as shown here, you can have actually uh, where, where you have, for example, a defect on the surface of a top plate um, with ions inside and a charged bottom plate that you can actually play with the charge of this bottom plate. So there's a preferred pattern on the bottom plate, and but there's some other condition on the top plate such that a defect can form either in the surface of the plate or in the line defect in the bulk. So again, when there's uh, no flex to electricity and uh, also no uh, ion partitioning, which we leave out for the moment, uh, you can see that uh, an inhomogeneous electric double layer forms shown by the, the color map. So the bottom plate is charged and the top plate is uncharged. Um, when you make the uh, when you make the preference to align perpendicular to the top surface uh, stronger, which can you do which you can do, for example, with chemically treating the surface, the surface defect, it changes to a line defect in the bulk. Um, and then if you check the surface charge density that such a different uh, direct configurations impose on the bottom plate, one sees that the, the surface defect causes an inhomogeneous charge distribution along the X direction. But if it's a bulk defect, uh, it becomes more sharply peaked uh, around the center of uh, the defect. Um, so actually one can in, uh, from this uh, deduce that if you bring a surface defect, uh, for example, from the top plate closer to that 
closer to that of the bottom plate, you can induce a, a surface charge on the bottom plate, which is purely because of dielectric effects, because there's uh, only the dielectric tensor included in this calculation. If you, if you would um, do this calculation again, but with flex electricity included, you have this. Uh, Excuse me, I mean, I'm missing something from that picture. Is this defect parallel or perpendicular to the surface? Um, so the, so it's uh, parallel to the surface. So uh, for example, uh, here you see that the surface defect is- What will happen if I will make the defects perpendicular to the surface? The, vortex, the defects lines cannot end in the, in the liquid crystal. They have to either form a loop or they end up on the, on the wall, right? Like a normal defects in the solid. The, the, um, what the, happens if the uh, defect they cannot end in the liquid? It has to either form a. I mean, topology prevents the vortex or the, your your defects to end up in the liquid. They have to go, either go to infinity or. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can also connect the two plates with a defect yes. line. So, they, to... so therefore, I'm asking the question: What happens if you will make the defects to to touch to be perpendicular to the wall? Or that um, has been looked up. Well, it depends. Uh, you also for sure uh, cause an inhomogeneous surface charge distribution um, because you, uh, if you have such a defect line connecting two plates, it will arise, give rise to an uh, inhomogeneous director field around it. Right? Yeah, that's that's why I'm asking. <laughs> so. Um, it will give rise to in this in inhomogeneous charge distribution on the plate and also an inhomogeneous diffuse ion cloud around it because of the director configuration. But um, I chose the example of the defect line parallel to the plate because I want to show that bringing a defect closer uh, to a plate can cause a surface charge in homogeneity. Are those loops? of the uh, of the, the defects in nematical crystals observed yes. i mean also yeah and what then happened uh, i don't have infinite because this this case you are studying was at least i understood it is the one defects which is along the wall yeah and it goes from infinity to infinity yes and and in reality, I mean, the, this will have to form a loop. Correct. And if it form a loop, then I have a circle. Yes. A distortion in the liquid crystal, like in a like a, like a dislocation loop in a crystal, and yes. uh, therefore, has this been studied? Explain. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, you can. So, of course, like uh, because of the. And then there is something interesting because I mean you you all in all these calculations and, and the models you have just one defect in the liquid crystal. You are not looking at the situation what happens when you have a several of those defects. So in topology, well, I mean, um, topologically your system is 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 ordered. Well, I mean you have an order parameter for one line. And I mean, you, you haven't looked at this. Uh, the should... reason why I'm asking is that if in the normal theory of in a, in a crystal theory of topological defects, there is a dramatic difference what happens when you have a uh, lots of defects around in the system. I mean, the diffusion problem with there is a lots of defects in the sample is uh, is uh, is uh, something extremely curious from mathematical point of view and also from theoretical. I mean, it leads, for example, to the Sinai diffusion. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, uh, the, these kind of defect uh, properties have been studied, uh, like when you have multiple defects. Uh, but um, so the thing is more that ions and liquid crystal defects, uh, they are not well studied. So we had to start with uh, a single defect 
But we have also, for example, studied, uh, which I will not discuss today, like when you have, for example, two particles with two different types of defects when they connect with each other and how the ions then respond to it. Okay. And you can also I'm, think I, I'm, ju uh, I'm just trying to make up association with what is here in the liquid crystals and what I knew from the from the normal theory of, I mean, normal in the sense of the theory of topological defects in the crystals. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, like it's interesting. Just trying to, to, to connect these two things with in my mind. Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. I mean, uh, it's, it, I would say it's kind of the same, but the symmetry no. group is different. Yeah. Um, how much time do I have, by the way? Uh, so, well, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so, so when you look at the effect of uh, flexoelectricity, uh, you can do the same game. So you uh, bring a surface defect closer to that of the bottom plate, uh, making it a bulk defect. And then the charge in homogeneity is even larger when you don't have flexoelectricity, but you have the same effect that if you have the defect closer to the bottom plate, it will induce a surface charge heterogeneity. And one can also look at uh, what happens uh, in the case of uh, a charged colloidal particle with a satin ring or uh, uh, a point defect. For example, uh, a point def uh, a satin ring has a completely different uh, surface charge distribution than that of a, a point defect. So one can imagine that one can shrink the satin ring to a point. Uh, so you can move the, the satin ring uh, below the particle and shrink it to a point. Um, and in doing so, uh, one changes completely the surface charge distribution. Um, when you do it with flexoelectricity included, uh, again, the effect is more pronounced. And I, I would like to uh, actually uh, uh, recall that uh, from the introduction that one can actually tune the position of topological defects. Uh, for, and so one can actually uh, play around with uh, where the surface charges reside on an external surface using uh, topological defects. Um, so I would like to uh, end this talk by some take home messages. So uh, I would like to, uh, I hope I have shown you that ions and liquids, uh, liquid crystals form a rich, relatively unexplored multidisciplinary field. Um, that topological defects can be highly manipulated and controlled, which I've shown with various examples, for example, with flow, uh, external electric fields, but also external surfaces by imposing an ordering on the surface and therefore restricting the topology that the system can, uh, can uh, obtain. Um, I've shown that topological defects can become charged objects. And furthermore, that topologi topological defects can be used to manipulate surface charge distributions. Um, as an outlook uh, that we are thinking about is whether we can use this uh, system of charged colloidal particles uh, and use the defect lines that form around them as liquid crystalline wires. For example, when you look at a many particle system with defect lines, the defect lines stay not around the particles in this, for example, such a way, which are numerical calculations. And then one can, uh, for example, think about ions that accumulate uh, in the defect lines and that you can, for example, steer the def uh, the, an ion current in such a def defect line. And so that comes back to the question that was asked earlier, what happens if you have, for example, defect line between connecting two charged plates? And the, and the dream is, of course, that you can make electronic elements based on liquid crystals. Uh, and with this, uh, I would like to end my talk. Okay, let's thank the speaker somehow, <laughs> virtually. Oh, wait. It's, uh... Okay. So, Jeffrey, thank you for the talk. You had uh, many comments during your presentation, but still we have time for next ones. If you could like uh, to start. May I have, may I ask you, what do you mean by electronic elements? 
what what is the use of these electronic elements in and what kind of devices can use this uh, electronic element well if you want to use the defects in itself as electronic elements so you can think about maybe uh, think about them as like wires that carry ionic current uh, but also um, one idea that we are talk, thinking about but not implemented is that if you have, for example, uh, not as in this uh, slide, uh, defect lines are connecting uh, to colloidal particles uh, or multiple colloidal particles. So actually, um, when uh, ions uh, move along the line, uh, they cannot move of, uh, further than the particle, right? So it's like a capacitor in this case. Uh, and what kind of practical uh, applications it has is, uh, I have to think about that still. Uh, what, one further, um, which has more practical application is that actually one can show that if you uh, put a liquid crystal uh, between, two, uh, between two electrodes, uh, you can actually use the fact that the dielectric that you have a dielectric tensor so the effective dielectric constant depends on the orientation of the liquid crystalline molecules so in this case when you tune the can tune the uh, global dielectric constant by reorienting for example the pneumatic liquid crystal you can also change the capacitance of such a device which so you can think about variable capacitors that you can tune by changing temperature or changing electric field or whatsoever so these are like more the uh, yeah, but that has nothing to do with defects exactly thing. but, but the, the next step would be uh, how defects would alter this uh, picture i believe that defects can only produce redistribution local redistribution of charges close to surfaces and as far as capacitor is concerned the capacitance of this device without liquid without defects are in an order of magnitude higher than uh, those with including with, um, lines of defects. What, what I understood that in principle, this is a priori known that if you have different other parameter, I mean, liquid crystalline state and uh, isotropic state, which is the case of um, defect. And plus you have different solubility of a defect. And, and you have deformation and flexor electricity. Then a priori it is known that will be a redistribution of, def, uh, of uh, ionic densities. Mm -hmm. uh, so just want to know what is the purpose of this calculation? Because it, I, as I said, it is absolutely clear that if you have different solubility, plus you have deformation and flex electricity, then the charge will be redistributed. Then, uh, and this defects, now this is comment about um, connection or maybe in parallel with uh, superconductor. In superconductor, these defects are multiple and they can change the phase, they can result in phase transition and many things. And here you have just one defect and you play with it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot, huge time for calculate all this director configuration. But, and this- uh, um, Actually the, the ions can also change the phase transition temperature. So it's oh. like- Ah, this would be something. but it's not the matter of uh, topological defects of course i know they can change they can change orientation just ions without electric field okay you but... add you add ions to your bulk and yeah. then the director orientation changing without any electric field without defect because the charge at the surface changing with absorbed additional charge and then electric field at the double of the double layer change the orientation of the rig. There's so many effects known. So what I'm just trying to understand what is the how to, what is the profit in any sense of this? Well, I mean, like in, in soft matter systems, um, the fact that you can have like a bulk, 
like charge separation in the bulk is uh, you can, for example, not achieve that with simple liquids. So it's really like that you uh, that it's because of the orientational structure of the liquid crystal and the fact that you can even uh, form electric multiple multi, multi layers. It is you, you it doesn't occur, for example, in simple liquids or in plasmas or whatever. It's really because of the partially ordered structure of the liquid crystal. So uh, you might think it's obvious, but I think it's maybe not so obvious. No, it is not obvious, of course. But in simple liquid, if you have uh, capacitors, standard capacitors, they yeah. are made, they're using isotropic liquid, but still they are capacitors. Yeah. Because so, I mean, are... I mean, coming back to your, also your comment about the capacitors, um, if you have the, uh, uh, indeed, like the application that I sketched is that, uh, you don't need the defects to have this variable capacitance up on the orientation. I can totally agree with that. But the, so that's a, that's a question about equilibrium, right? So the capacitance or differential capacitance in this case, it does not depend probably on the specific surface charge distribution because the total charge is of importance. However, if you look, I can imagine a situation that you look at the dynamics of the system, right? So that you, uh, for example, apply uh, uh, a potential jump. Yeah, and then, then it matters how the, the structure is. So for example, if you have a defect line connecting two electrodes, uh, a defect line is molten. So the conductivity in a molten defect line is higher. So it definitely has some influence on the dynamics. So. The, uh, and what's more is that uh, if so if you go to the dynamical picture like a lot of interesting stuff can happen for example also you have nowadays materials that if you apply for example an alternating voltage on the electrode uh, it will then the response of the system will be not just the dielectric the static dielectric tensor but you have to look at the frequency dependent uh, dielectric tensor and you have even materials that can switch between negative and positive dielectric and isotopy depending on the frequency. So, I mean, this is just, I, I would say that this work is just the beginning because there is like nothing known on electric double layers and pneumatic liquid crystals. And this is just, we had to understand the basic systems first, which are single topological defects, pneumatic isotopic interfaces, what happens when you look at, uh, for example, simple charge flat plates. And then one can look, ask about all these interesting questions. What happens when you add, for example, uh, flow? Uh, you can even make turbulent systems. How do charge currents uh, uh, couple to this, for example, turbulent systems because liquid crystals can form turbulence at low Reynolds number actually, which is kind of interesting. And I would say, uh, this is just to build the knowledge on the ions on liquid crystals because it's before it was actually totally not existing because people were not focused at it at all. Can I can I yes. ask? Yeah, so maybe now the last quick question of uh, Professor Tuski because we're running out uh, of time. I have a very simple question. I mean, you were talking mm -hmm. about the properties of the charges which are immersed into the pneumatic liquid crystals. Is anything known about the diffusion of a neutral particles in the pneumatic crystal? Yes, people have looked at that. Upon I mean, that. How, how, how the topological defects in the pneumatic crystal change a diffusion process of a neutral particles in a liquid crystal? Surely they have to change it. Yeah, I've looked, I've seen it for sure because of the orientational structure of the liquid crystal, you have that the mobility matrix of, a, of such a neutral particle has, uh, depends on which direction it moves, right? So it can be, for example, you have a facilitated yeah. diffusion it's, among- it's, it's very simple. I mean, if I would have a completely ordered pneumatic crystal, yeah. then I would accept that, that the diffusion perpendicular on, along the orientation axis of the pneumatic crystal crystal will be different. 
So that That's is why I have a topological defects. The situation is different, and the question is: uh, Is uh, anything known about the, what happens if I have a bunch of? I mean, it was already mentioned that the, that, for example, defect, the topological defects in superconductors play the role because there are plenty of dislocation in the real materials in the real world. There is always enormous amount of uh, <laughs> topological defects, like in a normal crystal, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, the the range of those this those topological defects affects the diffusion of a neutral particle, and yeah. the I problem with the charged particle is more complicated because this is a long range interaction. Yes. So. Um... I mean, we have one paper where we have looked at the, the fusion. So, but we did it more to probe, for example, the interaction potential between two charged particles. But if you look, for example, at a single neutral particle, you can imagine that it carries a defect along. So it depends. So if you move it upwards or to the side, it depends. It deforms at the local director field in a different way. So it definitely. Not necessarily. Not that, that 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 depends whether your defects are if you have more than one defects, whether these defects are of the same charge or not. I would whether, say already in the single the sample problem. is whether the sample is, is topologically charge neutral or not. Oh, because if they, if they I are think, not, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, but we're only like five minutes after. No, that's we we yeah. Uh, sorry this is for getting that. no it's getting technical but so i propose that we can uh, continue maybe i mean these people who are more in it uh yeah after the the official end now i propose to thank the speaker yeah. again okay